In this video, we'll curve fit some nonlinear data. We have a collection of data points which are contained in the ME2004 underscore nonlinear regression data dot map file. A link to the map file can be found in the video description. The data more or less conform to this equation, which is obviously nonlinear. We don't know the A and the B parameters, but we'll find them upon linearizing the data and applying least squares regression. Let's go ahead and linearize this equation so we know how to transform the data. The first thing we should notice is that we have y equals something squared, so the logical thing to do is to square root both sides to eliminate the square term. Now we can separate the right hand side into two fractions because we have a common denominator of b square root x. The square root x's right here cancel out, so this expression simplifies to a over b square root x plus 1 over b. Now we can identify the y, a1, x, and a0 terms. We see that y corresponds to the square root of y. We can pull out the a and the b from this term right here, which means our slope is a1 equals a over b. When we extract the a over b from this fraction, we're left with 1 over square root x, which is our transformed x term. Finally, the 1 over b term represents a0, the y-intercept. And this is our linearization. If we plot square root y versus 1 over square root x, we'll get a straight line with slope a over b and y-intercept 1 over b. This isn't one of the cases I listed in the linearizing nonlinear equations video, but recall that the list was not all-encompassing because there are way too many nonlinear functions in the world. This is an example illustrating the general process of linearizing an equation. Now that we know the linearized equation, we can transform the data accordingly and apply least squares regression in MATLAB to determine the unknown parameters a and b. As always, the first thing we need to do is plot. The first part of the script loads and plots the data from the MAT file, which you can get from the link in the video description. I already ran the code and the resulting plot shows a nonlinear trend in the data. This justifies our need to linearize. The next step is to compute and plot the linearized data. From the linearization, we know that the transformed x data is the reciprocal of the square root of the data. The transformed y data is just the square root of the y data. As we expected, there is a linear relationship among the transformed data. Now we can use the fit function and some post-processing functions to obtain the curve fit coefficients. We fit a straight line to the transformed data, not the original data. Keep this in mind when you call the fit function. You want to be calling the fit function with the transformed data, not the original data. The coefficients of the curve fit are stored in the fo object, so I called the cof values function to extract them into the vector cofs. From the linearization, we know that the y-intercept of the curve fit equals 1 over b, so I just rearranged it so that b equals 1 over the y-intercept. The linearization also revealed that the slope of the least squares regression equals a over b, so a equals b times the slope. The r squared value is stored in the Goff object, so I extracted it and stored it in the r2 variable. The r squared is nearly 1, indicating a near-perfect fit. 
Now that we've obtained the numerical values of A and B, we can draw the best fit curve through the original data. This is an anonymous function describing the equation given in the problem statement. We can see that it fits the data pretty much perfectly, so it validates our linearization and the numerical values of a and b. The last step is to predict some values using the curve fit. We want to predict the y values when x equals 1.6 and x equals 3.5. We have two choices. We can plug them directly into the myfit anonymous function, or we can take the long way and transform them, plug them into the fo object, and untransform the results. Let's take the long way just for fun. I made a vector containing the points at which we want to predict. Then, I transformed the x predict values by taking the reciprocal of the square root. When you plug the transformed points into the fo object, you get an equally sized vector containing the transformed y values. We have to untransform them, so I squared each element in the resulting vector. I squared them because the linearization tells us that the transformed y values are the square root of the original values, so to untransform it, we can just square the transformed value. As you can see, the predicted points fall perfectly in line with both subplots. This concludes the nonlinear regression example. To recap, we linearized an unfamiliar looking equation. There isn't a set process for linearization. It can be a matter of trial and error. When you linearize, try to isolate the y and x variables as much as possible. After you linearize, you can call the fit and cof values functions to perform least squares regression on the transformed data. Finally, always plot everything to make sure your curve fit actually represents the data well. See you next time.